Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today we're getting straight into my thrift flips. These are my before items and today I am going to use DIY paint for the first time in the color Apothecary. Brie from Upcycle by Brie uses this color all the time and I decided I should try it out. So I'm, I'm using Apothecary paint and white wax today on most of my projects. And I got the zipper brush from the Pinners Conference and really liked the way it worked. Today was my first time trying that out as well. And then this is my old, old stencil brush from like Joann's or Michael's. Um, really stiff brush and helped get into all the crevices. So let's start. These I've had probably, I don't know, 10 years. These are the colors that I used to have in my house and I am ready to mute them. I still love owls but let's just update them for how I want to use them now. So I'm doing two solid coats of the DIY paint right over just some well cleaned pottery. And I had to do some touch up there at the end, so I would call it two and a half coats on this pottery type stuff. But I really like the way it turned out. Next, I'm doing white wax, and I'm being pretty liberal with this wax so that it can get down in all these little crevices, and then just taking, I should have used a lint-free rag, but I just used a paper towel, and took off the high parts so that you could see the apothecary color on the high parts, and then the low parts had that yummy, yummy white wax in there. And it really helped bring out the adorable little features of these owls, and updated it to be more my style these days. Next, I got this piece of wood for $2.99 and decided to flip it over. Um, I was originally gonna paint it and decided, what if I use 220 grit sandpaper on it? What would the finish look like? I'm taking off that red, not my style, um, finish, just very lightly. And I decided to use some white paint on the inside. You can see I sanded all the high points and then just went with very liberal, liberal layers of white on the inside. Now, as you can imagine, this did have some bleed through. I kind of expected it, but I wanted to see how bad it was. I knew that it'd be multiple layers of white to color up this color. But I mean, look at the coverage just with one layer of white paint. I ended up doing two coats of this Rust-Oleum white just to see what the bleed through would look like. And after letting it dry, realized that I needed to do a nice layer of shellac. And I just sprayed it on the inside spaces to cover up any of the bleed through. And you can see right here, this is what it looked like after I sprayed the shellac, there's a shine to it. And I just let that dry and then covered it with one more layer of white, and look at this. This is great coverage and a great way to hide the old look. Now I'm just taking a wet wipe and kind of softening the chalk paint. Chalk paint dries with like this grit to it. Um, and you can see this is one side, but look at the other side. It's a nice little gorgeous wooden riser. See right here how thirsty this wood is? That's just a wet wipe. 
I need to wax it so that things spill on it and it won't stay. So I'm just doing one layer of this wax to bring out the richness of the wood and protect it. And I did it over the paint as well. If I was using this for holding a lot of things, I would probably do some polycrylic on the white, but right now this is all I need it for. So here is the final look at those gorgeous little owls and look at this piece of wood as a riser. $2.99 for a gorgeous piece of wood. You cannot beat that. Thrift stores, who knew? So here's a cross for, I got for $1.50 and this is that ceramic texture as well. So this one did need a solid three coats. It was, I cleaned it, but it was very, it didn't cover evenly until the third coat. And then I added white wax and look at how pretty this turned out. I feel like it updated it and would look really nice in a vignette in anyone's home. Neutral, but a little bit of color. This guy I got for $2.99. Um, two, I think I only needed about two coats on this. There was a little bit more grit to this side. So the DIY paint didn't come off very easy, which was nice. And here is that one with the white wax on it. I decided white wax was my, my thing with the pot to carry paint, and that's fine. I got this for a dollar. Guys, do not pass up little brass bowls. Look at this, this cute little succulent. It just adds like a darkness that, that this vignette needed. Here, I got this for $3, which hindsight, I probably shouldn't have paid that much, but whatevs. So I'm doing, I think I did two coats on this one. And then the good thing about DIY paint is it is water soluble. So until you seal it, you can just take a wet uh, napkin or wipe and distress it and let some of the metal come back through which is nice because you've got a little bit of artistic license when you have this type of DIY paint. So far I'm a fan of the DIY paint but look at that. That's white wax and you can kind of see some of the metal coming through. It makes it look old and really cool. And I'm going to show you how to make these round tops later on in the video. Next, I have these three candlesticks. The two white ones were $1.50 each. The one in the back is really heavy and was $3.50. This guy, I just wanted to lighten up and make it be a fun, tall candlestick. So, two, I needed two coats of the apothecary because it had such a dark background. And if you really wanted a lot of that detail to come through, you could do a, um, wet distress. These guys, somebody started the project, they spray painted it with a chalk paint and they did not like the coverage or how it felt, but they just missed a couple steps. So the good thing is I only needed one coat of apothecary on top of this since it was already a nice white color. So they just needed if they were doing it themselves, one more coat of paint and a wax and it would have been a gorgeous finish, but it was mine for $1.50 each. I'm not going to complain. So when I did the white wax on this one especially, I was super liberal with the white wax because I wanted all that yummy wax to be in those crevices to really show the ornateness of this candlestick. So after Working in sections with the white wax, you don't want to let it dry. You want to put it on and then wipe it off and then move to the next section. The longer you keep it on, the harder it is to wipe off. So it's best to work in sections. And then you wipe off. See that apothecary coming through and the white just staying in all the crevices, just such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Next I'm going to work on these wood rounds. I've got Waverly Antique Wax. I'm using it straight from the bottle this time. No water down here. 
I got these wood rounds for a dollar a piece at a thrift store and I just don't like the tone of them. So I am putting straight antiquing wax on there to darken it up. I didn't have to take the sheen off. They had a little bit of sheen. But I just covered it in the antiquing wax and then wiped it down. And you can see that changes the color of it already. But I wanted the color story to be the same as the bottom. So after this wax dried, I added the white wax to it just so it wouldn't look like such a stark contrast between the apiary, the, the apothecary and the white wax. So just wipe off the excess and then look at that fun new wooden color you've created out of a thrifted piece. What do you think? Are you in love with the yummy white wax like I am? These wood rounds I just glued with E6000 overnight and it is instantly a riser, a candle stand, whatever you want it to be. Next, I have this legit old architectural salvage piece that I got probably 12 years ago from the junk pile. It was dirty. And so back in my day when I loved this really bright color, I painted it, I tried to make it look grungy, but that aqua blue is not for me. So I'm just covering the whole thing again in the apothecary color. But since this is legit old, I wanted to look that way. So I took the remnants of the antiquing wax that was left on my paper towel and on my brush to kind of get in the nooks and crannies of this piece. I don't want it to look money. I see that it's starting to look that way. Don't panic. You can still distress. You can still use water to get some of this off. So I am trying to make this look old again, just with the color scheme that I want it to, to be in. So I went to my handy dandy diaper wipes. They are the best friend in a crafter's room. And I just did a little wet distressing and let some of the color that it used to be come through and get some of that wax off the high point so it didn't look so muddy but kept it in all the crevices to keep this thing looking old like it is but just work within my decor of needing them to be muted colors so let me know what you think in the comments below All right, this next find, this pretty lady, was $3. I am not doing a thing to her. I just wanted to show you the fun treasures you can find at a thrift store. So, what do you think of this architectural sal salvage? Why can't I talk? Still looks crunchy and grungy, but with the colors that I want it to be. So that's it for this week's video. Let me know what is your favorite thrift store find or project or decor for my house that I switched to be more updated for me. I'm really loving this piece of wood, I cannot lie. Um, I am so excited. As of the time that I'm editing this, I'm about at 850 subscribers. And my goal is to get to 1,000 and I am excited about the growth. So I just wanted to say thank you everybody for your support. And if you like my content, I would love it if you would hit subscribe so that you know when I upload my videos each week. 
you have friends that would love this kind of content, I would love it if you would share and let me know what you think, what your favorite is, what kind of content you would like to see moving forward. I am hearing that the thrift flips are the things that you guys like. So let me know if there's any other content you'd like to see and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!